Hey guys, Titan1500 and in today's video I'm going to show you how to install boost reference power valves. Stick around. Okay guys, so first off, what is a boost reference power valve? So the standard Holly power valves, like I have here in my hand, you can see there's a small diaphragm that is closed or open under, under intake manifold vacuum. So when the vacuum disappears, the valve opens. And when that opens and a naturally aspirated carb is when it adds extra fuel in. A boost reference power valve here works on a little bit different principle. It has a spring and instead of vacuum, as the bowl gets pressurized, it'll open later. It's just a tool that we can use to tune when we want more fuel to come in in the fuel curve. Uh, sometimes you can use two of these. So you can say one comes on at three pounds and then on at maybe 10 pounds. Or you can use a combination of a vacuum power valve and a boost reference power valve or just a boost reference power valve. Um, typically in the past, no one used these because uh, CSU, I believe, started that this whole craze for it. Or people use a crutch system with external air pressure to activate them. Um, you don't need one all the time. But as the power levels increase, they become much more critical. So let's take a look at a couple of these. Okay, so now that we know what the power valves are, the boost reference power valve versus the vacuum operated power valve, let's talk a little bit about how we use them or when we're gonna use them. So right here, it's a simple drawing, is a naturally aspirated uh, carburetor setup. You can see here, at say 150 horsepower is your steady state driving. You're just on your primaries and idle circuit, vice versa. When you give it some, some throttle, you get your, prime, your power valve enrichment, just a little bump here. And that'll help you when you just roll up a hill, it keeps your air fuel nice and steady at you know, 12.5 or whatever you want, you know, 13s or something. And then finally, when you go full throttle, you open your secondaries 100%, it'll spike right up to your maximum fueling you know, say 500 horsepower is a key. So you're kind of splitting this up, is that you have your primaries, a little bit of enrichment when the vacuum goes away, you're rolling in a throttle, and finally, when you're under full throttle. So that seems to work pretty fine for naturally aspirated carburetors, of course. So this is a blow-through carburetor here, animation, that without a boost reference power valve, so you can see the problem here is that same thing, same 150 horsepower flying down the road that you're feeding with your primary jets. You open it up, it's a bigger bump because we'll enlarge our, pro our power valve channels. You'll, we'll talk about that later, but you try to make up some of the fueling here with your power valve, and then what happens? You go to full throttle and wham, here's your, five, your naturally aspirated 500 horsepower. Well, now you're at 800 horsepower or 1,000, depending on how much boost you're running. And look at the discrepancy between what it had to do from the primary to the secondary. And this is a lot of times why the carburetors that don't have boost reference power valves, they drive just fine when you're here in this you know, 600 to 800 horsepower range. There's not a whole lot more of a step from when the secondary opens. But the problem is you start, the more power you make, the bigger this jump is going to be. And we want to find a way to smooth this curve out. So in this ca case, you'd be rolling up a hill and you start, instead of this vacuum going away, you're building boost. So you might be building four, five, six pounds. Maybe it's on its way up. You're just part throttle. You're not in your secondaries yet. So you're going, you're just cramming boost and air and you're going lean. It's not compensating anything in the zone. So that's why you'll hear sometimes people say you're on a boost reference you know, carburetors only run either at idle or cruise or wide open. There's nothing in between. Um, and that's a lot of times the case if someone's running a big power setup with no boost reference power valves, because they do, they'll roll into it and it gets leaner than shit until they go full throttle and then it'll be better. So here's a drawing of what it's like with a boost reference power valve. Same engine, 150 cruise, your first tip in, you could have a normal power valve, it'll help some fuel, and then here's your next power valve, it could be your boost reference at three pounds or eight pounds, or this could be a boost reference at three pounds, and this one at 10 pounds, but you can stagger it up, and you're still at half part throttle, secondaries aren't open, now your boost came in, your next power valve opened, 
and now wide open you hit the secondaries and boom it's just got this little bumped 800 or a little bit more to a thousand and you can tune when these come on and off and how much fuel they give to help give you this nice linear fuel curve so you can be rolling up that hill half throttle and have your fuel uh, air fuel ratio at an acceptable level or leave on the trans brake and not just have one power valve open and provide all this fuel and flood your motor out. Sometimes you have to spread all this, this fuel out just so you don't just dump it all in and choke the motor out. So this is why we use boost reference power valves and why they've made the and they've really made the whole blow through game possible for what they are today for driving. Um, especially in these smaller engines, these LS motors that are real popular, these five threes, they don't make a lot of power naturally aspirated, but once you put 30 pounds of boost at them, yeah, they're making over a thousand horsepower. You know, if you had a big block Chevy, 500 cubes, you might be running 600 horse, you know, naturally aspirated. You only got to put eight, eight, you know, eight to 10 pounds. And then the, again, the curve is more, you know, up here. It's not such a big one. You run the 800 curve, not this giant jump. So if you start, the weaker the motor you start with, and the more boost you need to run, the more critical, in my opinion, the boost reference power valve becomes. So here we have two carburetors. Uh, we have a traditional blow-through carburetor here, and we have a down-leg uh, carburetor, both uh, Pro Systems 950s. Uh, this one here, as you can see, it has the boost reference power valve in the secondary. And it's the same power valve he here. It's just we have added a little piece of uh, copper tubing because it's on the secondary so it can pick up fuel just like the jet extension and it just extends to the back of your bowl. We'll show you how to add this here. Um, it's pretty easy to add these. You can add them in the primary as well just like you would on a normal carb. So this one here has the standard one. So you can see on my primary I'm using a vacuum operated power valve. That way right, right when I tip it off the throttle the first thing to happen is what? You lose vacuum and the boost starts to build. So this will bring in uh, vacuum. So unlike a standard carburetor, like a non-blow-through application, with a blow-through carburetor, there's a much greater need for fuel. So this is where this becomes important. Um, and one thing that we can do here is by adjusting these um, power valves, other than the timing of when we turn the boost, the power valves on or off, what else can we do? Um, so here, the power valves goes in, go into these holes here, and we can affect how much fuel they flow. So generally, if you are going to use vacuum-operated operated power valves, you want to run the four-hole power valves, the high-flow power valves, because you're going to need the fuel, especially in E85. Um, these boost reference ones flow a lot more fuel anyways, generally because uh, the ball can open farther that's inside of here it's a ball and spring but another thing it's hard to see here on this black um, throttle on this one sorry hard to see on the black metering block but here on the standard holly block we can see there's two holes in here and this is uh, this is for off of a 600 horsepower Windsor Ford and he's running 90 you know 93 octane Look how small those power valve openings are. You don't need a whole lot of fuel, especially on gasoline. Um, but again, they're only making up a little bit of discrepancy from the, the primary to the secondary. You know, maybe you know 7,500 horsepower max on a blow-through carb. You know, we're trying to smooth it out. Look how big those holes are, and they're not plugged. They're straight through. Those are 125. And sometimes you'll see four of them in this channel because people need a lot more fuel. So on this carb, we're going to run holes like this in the primary and the secondary to aid in the fueling. Okay, so what do we have to do to install the boost reference power valve? I'll put the links in for all the parts in, in the descriptions below so you guys can get yourself your own boost reference power valve. But the key thing to note here are there's a few differences is these are both the secondary side of the carburetor. It's the same main body, so I want to show a difference. On this one here, this one hasn't been modified at all, you'll see there's a huge lump in here. And that's not a big deal for a normal power valve. 
So a normal power valve, like it's right here, look at the boost reference. It's got this knob that sticks above. That's a problem because this is nice and low profile. It fits right in that hole. These ones do not. This will bump into that, this, this notch here. So you can see from this carburetor, we have ground the notch out. And it's pretty easy to do. All you gotta do is really get a, get a die grinder and just take your time and just slowly work it out till it's nice and smooth. And then I would just take a little bit of clay and I put it back here and then I would just seat the, seat the, seat the metering block on there until it fits. Now you're also gonna have to note there's a passage right here. You can see this small hole. And on this one, it's right here. So generally, this is how this would get vacuum into this cavity and pull the diaphragm open to give you fuel. Well, we don't want that now, and we can't have that because we can't have the leak as it goes through. We have to seal this off so when the boost pressure fills the bowl, it will open it. So we can't have it the same boost on either side, otherwise it'll never open because the intake mouth down below, this goes below into the base. And if it has boost here and boost here, it'll never open. Okay, so now we have to plug these holes here um, so we get the boost reference into the power valve. So we're gonna be using a 436 uh, tap here, and that requires a number 43 drill bit. And I, in, the link, in the links in the description down below, I'll also have the link for the drill bit and the tap together. Um, in case you guys don't have a tap kit and number drill bits, because I know the number drill bits aren't that common. Um, so yeah, we can just drill these out here. They're almost the right size, so it doesn't take much. Okay, bottom one. That was the right size already. Now we can get the tap out. Part of the puzzle here is how, when we install this, how do we get the extension to come out so it can actually grab fuel? Just like the jet extensions here, you know, when you get, when you hit the gas, the front power valve doesn't need a jet extension because the, the gas is forced against it. In the rear, the gas is forced back into this, in these big ass fuel bowls. So you have to be able to reach back there to get it. You know, at least the same distance as your jet extensions. But the jet extensions are lower, so you definitely want to try to bend this piece of copper tubing. So the best way I found to get this, without having to buy a full roll of this, this is 5 sixteenths copper tube. It's very easy to work with. Um, you can go to the, the, the plumbing section and you'll find uh, little faucet extensions and they'll have little sections of the, these, this pipe here and just find one that's 5 sixteenths and it'll, it'll be like 8 to 10 bucks or something like that. Just cut, just cut it off what you need and you can make this or you can get a full copper too but you're going to get 30 feet or so and that's going to run you 60 bucks or something so avoid that but there are just look through the plumbing section you'll find 5 16 copper tubing just a little straight sections kind of like brake line um, you can use brake line as well uh, the steel it's a lot harder to work with um, so basically though if we do this so if we install our power valve here find our gasket Okay, so now we ground that out everything earlier. Okay, fits good. So you can just cut this straight and you kind of get an idea of how long it needs to be. You can see that there's a gap in between. You'll have to play with your own float bowls and figure out what it needs. But you know, put it in there and make sure it fits right. The trick is though that the 5 16ths is a bit too big. So 
You can see here, it's hard to tell, but on the edge, it's, it's kind of crimped in right here. All you got to do is just, just pinch at the pliers a little bit and then see if it's tight. Pinch at the pliers again. And you just want it, it's kind of like swedging it on there. You want it to be really tight. So that one is tight. This doesn't come off. I mean, but I bent it down so it's about the same level here so it can pick up. But at the same time, if you bend it too much, you might not be able to get it out. So make sure that you don't bend it you know, too much. That way, once this is on there, there's no reason to take that back apart again. So I can, oh yeah, she's on there pretty good. I'll screw it back in if I want to take it off, but there's really no need. There it is. So that now we got, that's installed. I mean, that's all you really got to do. Plug the hole, drill a lump out of it, or grind the lump out, and then create your extension. Now with this power valve, you can just turn this knob in, and that will give you um, more pressure. So it basically takes more than three pounds. This is going to actually, yeah, this is on the secondary. So I'm going to set this one up for eight to 10 pounds. Uh, you can hook up to a compressed air and test it or just kind of get a feel for it. Depends on what you want to do. I've, I've already played with this one before, so I, I know where it's at. Uh, you can simply blow into it from this side because the carburetor is providing pressure into the bowl, through the tube, and that's where it feels that pressure on the fuel and it'll open and close. Um, so on this carburetor, I'm going to put two boost reference power valves this time around. The first one's going to open at about three, po three pounds of boost, just a little bit. And the second one, I'm going to try to get up around 8 to 10 just to help me get up off the trans brake and make that transition into wide open throttle a little bit smoother. And uh, hopefully it lights off quicker. Well, that's pretty much it. Um, once you have the power valves installed, remember it's about the timing when you bring the power valves in and out to help and also the volume of fuel, of fuel that's done with the power valve channel restrictors. The holes that you drill behind the power valve. So you mess with those two, and also there's something called keeping a carb square. So you don't want to have all of your secondaries doing all the fueling, or your cylinder cylinder distribution gets pretty bad. So generally, start with a power valve in the front, then bring it into the back, since the secondary side is usually bigger on the jets, but you can calculate the square of all the areas and all that stuff to help you out. Um, but just keep that in mind, it doesn't need to be that hard. So. I guess take it or, take it or leave it. Uh, you can really spend a lot of time getting it squared out, um, but if you're really pushing your combination, it's going to help more. And also remember that a lot of the suggestions are that suggestions. So it's not the end all, be all. There's plenty of people out there that know way more about blow throughs than I do. Uh, just show, kind of showing what works for me and for my buddies. Um, so yeah, um, like everything, I have all the links in the description below in the video for the tap and die, the power valve, the tubing, you know, everything you need to get this, your carb set up to a booth reference power valve. And also, if you guys liked the video, like and subscribe. Thanks.